welcome to this video and in this video I wanted to kind of have a look at the capture process of Triton and was it originally a double dwarf planet before it ended up a moon of Neptune. So let's have a recap kind of on planets, moons and basically how they move. So planets generally will spin in the same direction that they orbit the sun or the star. So any planet that orbits a star, they are likely to basically rotate. Well, they will be rotating on their axis and the axis would generally align with their orbit in the same direction that they're going around their star. So the Earth obviously rotates in the same direction that we are orbiting around um, our star, which is the sun. That's common for all planets. Now, they are sometimes are slightly tilted, but that's due to some interaction after they actually form. So they should generally, as a rule, spin the same direction that they orbit. The same is also true for moons. So if that planet has moons, if those moons formed with the planet around the star at the same time, they would have orbits in the same direction that, they, that the planets would orbit the star. And the moon would also rotate in the same direction as well. So everything is kind of doing their rotations and orbits in the same direction, the same plane. Now, the reason for that is that planets form in this disk. So this is a disk of gas and dust. And you have a young star in the center. Whilst that young star is still forming, planets will form in the disk. So you get like a gravitational collapse of material in the disk, which then grows and to conserve that angular momentum of the disk which is orbiting the star as it collapses they will rotate faster but they maintain the same direction so you can't change the direction of that rotation or that orbit they maintain that so if a planet forms around a star then it would actually orbit and spin in the same direction that the star would be spinning any moons that form with that planet would do exactly the same thing as well so if they form together that's the orientation that they would have. Now, a good example of that is Jupiter. So this is the Juno spacecraft as it moves towards Jupiter, and you can see it rotating, and you can also see the Galilean moons orbiting around the outside. Now, actually, if you've got a small telescope, you can observe the Galilean moons as well, and you could probably get some rotation of Jupiter over time if you took some images. It's a very bright, large object, and so are the moons, so you can see it from your uh, back garden if you want to. So basically, the Galilean moons formed with Jupiter. They orbit the same direction that Jupiter is spinning. So it's a good example, really. However, Neptune's moon Triton is orbiting in the opposite direction. We were classified as a retrograde orbit. So a prograde orbit is when it's orbiting in the same direction that the planet is spinning or rotating. Retrograde is the opposite. So here you've got a moon going in the opposite direction. Now, that automatically tells us that it didn't form in that location, that it was likely captured or it came from somewhere else. So that's quite interesting. Saturn's moons, you've got lots of retrograde moons there. You've got a prograde group and you have a retrograde group. Jupiter has exactly the same. So these are groups of moons that are orbiting in the opposite direction. That tells us that they're captured. They didn't form with the planet. They're likely captured asteroids or minor planets. And a lot of the planets have them. Jupiter and Saturn have a large group because they're quite large planets. So they, they can gravitationally capture quite a few. Now, captured moons you need to have a smaller object, so a minor planet, a dwarf planet asteroid, and it will be orbiting the sun, and it will get close enough to another planet that it gets gravitationally captured, and it ends up on a new orbit. Now, that typically has to be within the hill sphere of that planet, and if you don't know what that is, I have got some other videos that explain what the hill sphere is, and that then ends up on a new orbit. Now that orbit doesn't have to be in the same direction that the planet is orbiting. It can be retrograde, it can be inclined, it depends on the approach, how the planet and the minor planet actually have that close encounter and that will dictate their final orbit. But it's one of the only sources to get a retrograde orbit. Now this is where it gets quite interesting for Triton, is that Triton is actually bigger than Pluto. It has an atmosphere, but there, I mean, I say that Triton is bigger 
than Pluto, but they are relatively similar in size. Triton is a little bit bigger, but they both have atmospheres and they are both almost exactly the same composition. So they're almost the same object. They formed kind of in the same location. They're made of the same thing. They're almost the same size. So this is where it gets quite interesting because they have a common origin of where they formed, where they were originally. So Pluto and Triton are Kuiper Belt objects. They were originally in the Kuiper Belt. Pluto is still there. And Pluto is the largest current Kuiper Belt object. So it's the largest one in the Kuiper Belt at the moment, which is why it's not classified as a planet. It's a dwarf planet. Triton was the largest known Kuiper Belt object. It's no longer there, but it originated from it. So they have a common origin, which is why they have a common composition and they look quite similar. They are, they are basically a very similar object. Now, something would have sent Triton inwards to Neptune because Neptune is kind of at the edge of the solar system. And this Kuiper belt goes kind of up to Neptune's orbit or it's just outside of Neptune's orbit and then goes beyond. So Pluto, Pluto and its moon are technically a binary or double dwarf planet. The reason for that is, although its moon is smaller than Pluto, they are quite similar in size than a normal planet-moon system, although this is a dwarf planet. So they orbit a common centre of mass as opposed to the moon appearing to go round. The only other one in our solar system which is similar to that is the Earth and the moon. They There is a big kind of size, well, they're quite close in size compared to the normal moon planet system and because of that we can think of them as double planets or dwarf planets now binaries are quite common in the Kuiper belt because they're a long way from the gravitational interaction of the sun and the further away you are from the sun that can't disrupt their orbit so you you quite often find binaries in the Kuiper belt so it could be that triton was a, a binary at some point so the the capture process of Triton is thought to possibly be from a binary system that got too close. So you had like a double dwarf planet. They were orbiting a common centre of mass. They could have been fairly similar in size, like the Pluto system and its moon. And if it got too close to Neptune, one of those components would have been captured and then the other one would have been thrown back out and ejected. So the actual one that was captured, it's essentially replaced its dwarf planet component with a larger planet component so it's almost like a gentle swap and the reason why this is a more favored scenario is that the capture of triton is it's quite gentle and it happens relatively quickly so it's a fairly brief and gentle process and they get close enough relatively slow and it's captured so it's like a nice gentle swap onto a new orbit and then the other one is ejected onto its own orbit and it, it floats off and back into the carpet belt or wherever it is it's now so the only way you can really get the single capture of a triton like object onto its current orbit is if it had a collision with an existing moon which is quite a violent process we don't really think that's likely to occur so it's a less likely scenario but you need to have a collision with an existing moon to get the system that we have now whereas a binary capture doesn't need that it's more likely, it's more gentle. So it's one of the reasons why we think that Triton is a binary or dwarf, double dwarf planet that has been captured. It's the more likely scenario, given that binaries are common, it's a gentle process, it's more likely. So we think it was originally this double dwarf planet and wonder where its second component is, is now. Where was that second part of that double dwarf planet but anyway thank you for watching and if you enjoy you can check out some of the other videos